All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Eggleston, and I run Course Report, which is a resource for students who are choosing a coding boot camp. If you haven't used Course Report yet, this is my one shameless plug. You can use our directory to find schools that fit your learning style. You can check out our blog for interviews with students and instructors and founders at boot camps all across the world. We've got application tips virtual classroom tours, everything you need to choose the bootcamp that's best for you. And if you are researching coding bootcamps or maybe just researching the path to getting into tech, you've definitely come across AWS or Amazon Web Services. And so in the next 15 minutes or so, you're going to learn what this is, what AWS is, and how it's actually used on the job. So today, Jacob Bathon, who is an instructor at Sabio. Hi, Jacob. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. My pleasure. So Jacob is an instructor at Sabio, which is a coding boot camp in California. They've also got a great online boot camp. Um, he's here to talk us through AWS. You know, we'll talk about what AWS is who uses it, and why you should learn it, because you're most likely going to be using it in your first job as a developer um, these days. So Jacob, thank you so much for being here. I have a bunch of questions for you, but I want to start off by just asking about your background and how you actually got into tech. Was it a traditional path for you, or um, how did you make it here? Uh, yeah, it was uh, anything but traditional, actually. Uh, my, I started off in the, you know, I started off in the military. I'm a Navy veteran. Um, and then after I transitioned out, I uh, spent some time in the medical field, first as a, uh, a patient transporter and then as an x-ray technician. Um, I wasn't really happy with it. Um, you know, like, like a lot of us kind of, yeah, I've, I've always had, you know, some interest in, in computers and never found out about uh, coding boot camps until a buddy of mine said, hey, you should try this out if you like it. Um, and then one, you know, one rainy day in December, I had a change of heart, did a 180 career switch you know, signed up for a boot camp, and I've been here ever since. The boot camp that you signed up for, was it Sabio? It was, yes. Awesome. Well, I know AWS is part of the Sabio curriculum, so I think you're the perfect person to ask about, about Amazon Web Services. So do you want to just start, like, high level? What is AWS? What problems does it solve? Um, what, are we, what are we kind of talking about at a high level? Right. So AWS, uh, for those who don't know, is an acronym that stands for Amazon Web Services. And basically what it is, is a, it's a solution for uh, a cloud-based platform, which offers a ton of different services for developers, uh, ranging from things like hosting to, to storage and, and everything else in between. Um, the reason why so many companies and developers like it is because it's easy to set up, it's very secure, it's you know resilient, and um, easily scalable. So you could have it for just one user or you could have it for millions of users. Um, so, you know, for instance, if you needed to create a website where you would, you know, store millions of photos, um, something like a, a Facebook or, you know, like a Twitter or something, you know, you could have the issue where if you're trying to do things yourself, you would have all these hard drives, you know, in some room somewhere and you'd have to buy them and you have to figure out where to store it and how you were going to scale up the solution if you ever, you know, got a spike in users. Um, and that would be a massive pain to set up by yourself. Uh, AWS makes it very, very easy to, to kind of have these things set up, have them as big or as small as you need it. And, you know, everything just depending on your company needs. That is a fantastic kind of description definition and love the example of having to store millions of photos, um, <laughs> before AWS, I'm assuming you'd have to literally have many physical servers, doing all of that yourself. Yeah, um, absolutely. That's kind of a huge barrier to, to entry for a lot of people. So, um, so how long has AWS been popular or, um, or kind of gained popularity over the last few years? So AWS is, it started originally in, in 2002. So about 20 years ago now. Um, but recently as, as computing needs have, have increased, um, and, you know, websites have been getting bigger and, you know, it's been, somebody has been searching for more and more uh, solutions on how to, how to host these websites, how to handle these uh, processes, how to handle, you know, these storage solutions. And so uh, AWS was kind of really the first and biggest competitor in, in that space. Um, they were, you know, really the first ones to do it, beat out beating uh, Microsoft and Google. And now they have a, a firm platform in, in cloud computing and, and cloud hosting. So whenever 
whenever somebody mentions to a developer, uh, hey, you know, you 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 do things on the cloud, you use uh, like you know cloud platforms or cloud engineering, uh, there's a very very good chance that they're talking about AWS. But could you maybe run us through a couple of examples of how an engineer might use AWS on the job? Right. So there are a lot of little. So AWS is comprised of a lot of little different services. And so depending on what you need, uh, you're going to have, you know, one or multiple of these services set up. So like uh, one of the more popular ones is uh, called S3, uh, which is an acronym for simple storage service. And so this can type, this can store any type of an object for, you know, as an all purpose storage. So uh, I know companies uh, like Union Bank and Monzo use it uh, in the financial industry to, to hold uh, records, uh, to hold you know, information. Um, it's also used by in the medical field. Uh, I know uh, when I was in, uh, when I was doing x-rays actually, uh, you know, Amber Health, they're, they're using a lot of um, data back and forth to share patient history, to hold x-ray information, uh, lab results, and a lot of that uh, can be stored on S3. So it's a great all-purpose storage. Um, they use it for for backups, for data recoveries in case of disaster. You know, like the the example we talked about before with uh, you know large scale image holding, you would use something like S3 to to hold you know massive amount of images. Those are really good examples of so financial services, medical field. Um, S3 being one of those one of those services that you would use within AWS. Okay, so I feel like we can't talk about AWS without mentioning cloud computing. Um, right. So how do those two fit together? Are they kind of inextricably link? So, you know, a cloud is, you know, more or less, it's, it's somebody else's computer somewhere else, right? And so what, you know, a cloud engineer is somebody who, who kind of like manages these, these systems and, and these processes at a company. Um, so like there, the role would be to, to set up the architecture based on the needs of the company, um, you know, managing, managing security groups, making sure these, uh, these storage and databases and, and hosting systems are secure, um, you know, troubleshooting and maintenance whenever things happen, because, you know, things do happen. So, um, and, you know, the, every now and again, they'll, they'll need maintenance on these systems as, as new updates uh, come out. And then uh, a big thing that I've seen cloud engineers do is migrating older systems uh, older existing systems to newer to AWS, um, and this can be done by you know these cloud engineering is you know in my experience it's 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 a niche role, um, but it, they do exist in in large numbers in bigger companies. Um, in smaller companies, uh, you know software engineers, you know the full stack engineers can can do things in AWS as well. Uh, but you know to my experience, the bigger the company, the more you'll have dedicated cloud engineers to do all that stuff. At a smaller company, you may be like responsible for uh, for the for cloud engineering as part of your like larger software engineering role. Exactly correct. Got it. And have any of your students in the last year, or even maybe classmates from Sabio, gone on to work as cloud engineers or even like AWS developers? Yeah. So uh, people do end up getting hired as cloud developers outside of Sabio. Um, uh, recently, there was a recent cohort that graduated where five of their, uh, for five people were hired as uh, cloud engineers in, in Orange County. And so when they get there, you know, on the job, they're getting paid to, to learn and take their uh, AWS uh, cloud certification. Um, there also have been some people who, who actually get hired and work at AWS. And so not only do we have people working on the cloud, we have people building it as well. That's so cool. I feel like recently in the last year or two, there's so much talk of like, you know, what's on the horizon, it's all cloud, right? Um, it's such a popular technology and just general like infrastructure. But sometimes you can think, especially a beginner who's looking at a boot camp, can think like, what does that actually mean? Uh, you know, what, what kind of job am I gonna get? And mm -hmm. um, those are perfect examples. Getting your AWS cloud certification, working at a large company, maybe managing that, you know, for the larger company or working in a small company and, and, you know, having that be part of your larger job. Right. So yeah, those are really good examples. Um, fantastic. Okay. So you mentioned before that Amazon, obviously AWS stands for Amazon web services, Amazon kind of made it into this market first with AWS, but, um, and, and, you know, beat Microsoft and Google into the market, but what about those competitors? Like who, what are the other cloud, um, services companies that you might run into as you're, you know, researching AWS? 
Right. So the two biggest competitors that you'll run into outside of AWS are Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform. Um, obviously, these are, you know, as well as Amazon, you know, multi-billion dollar companies who can afford to to host these big cloud services. And so in my, you know, to me, it, it it's all preference on, on what you want to use. Um, AWS offers a lot of services, a lot of great documentation, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of scalable options depending on the size of, of of the application that you're trying to host and you know uh azure does that as well uh azure does that as well and um google cloud platform do it as well you know i i just you know, i can't really speak to them i've never never really used it because by the time i get to a company everybody's already using aws so i've <laughs> i've never really had to use anything else the market share may be changing slightly but aws is still seems to be pretty dominant are there yeah, absolutely are there any downsides to AWS or, you know, kind of cloud services in, in general? It sounds like it's great for streamlining and um, and kind of simplifying the process. Um, but does that, can you run into any problems not owning your own servers or, or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. So a big disadvantage, and this is something that, that's going to have to be weighed when you make the decision to go in cloud, is that you're kind of at the mercy of wherever your data is hosted. So uh, a good example of this is uh, last year in December, there was a massive AWS outage uh, that took out the US West 1 and US West 2 servers. And so it took out things like Hulu, Twitch, it took out you know, the League of Legends and PlayStation Network platforms. Um, I even had a friend who, who was at Disneyland and they took down their Disneyland uh, mobile app and they're like, oh, I can't sign up for FastPass or anything, nothing works. And you know, it was just frustrating for everybody. Um, and so things like that are, are, are going to happen. Um, it's just, you know, it's just the nature of it. Um, no solution is ever perfect. Um, you know, and every, you know, everything that we do is, is going to be susceptible to data loss or leaks or, or some security issues, or even, you know, some major downtime that, that we have unexpected. So there's always going to be a pro and con on, on hosting on the cloud or any using any cloud-based services. And so it really is dependent on what you need and if you're willing to accept if, if you're willing to accept those cons um, as opposed to, you know, hosting it yourself. Absolutely. Okay. So when does, when do students learn AWS at Sabio? Is this like something that you learn right off the bat, super important and like easy to learn, or is it a bit more advanced? Where, where does it come into the curriculum? Right. So uh, we, 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 we feel that AWS is, is something that's a little bit more advanced and we can't possibly teach everything uh, in AWS during their time at Sabio. So we teach the basics of AWS in regards to storing and receiving data uh, via the S3 storage bucket. Um, and then some, some people, when, they, when, they're, you know, when they're advanced, um, they go through Sabio, they're able to implement, they're able to advance to the point of the curriculum where they're able to implement it themselves. Um, and then when they get to the final project, uh, at some point, everybody's going to get their hands in, in AWS and start, you know, configuring things and, and working with that. So, so by the time the, the students graduate, they'll all have some experience with uh, working with AWS. Very cool. So expect that in the final project stage for sure. Um, uh, excellent. Okay. So, um, Jacob, last question, what are your favorite kind of resources for beginners who are interested in AWS or should they even start there? Is it, is there a better place to start if you're, if you're interested in cloud engineering? And so if you're interested in cloud or, or, or AWS in general, there's, there's a ton of resources. Um, I know there's a ton of on YouTube. Free Code Camp in particular has a lot of free uh, tutorials to get with building aid on AWS. Um, there's also a ton of free um, courses on on Udemy. There's also paid courses as well if if you're looking for those. Um, there's also a free a course that's highly recommended on Coursera uh, for AWS. Um, there's also a AWS also provides their own hands-on tutorials where you go in. You know, you'll have tutorials like setting up a, a database, um, launching your own, hosting your own uh, WordPress sites, um, you know, hosting your own storage buckets, you know, and they'll have they'll have these tutorials where you can go in and get your hands dirty and, and set it up. And, you know, they also have a, a very generous free tier where you can try out uh, many of their services for free for like a personal project, nothing you know too major. And so, you know, my my big recommendation is if you want to learn something, you know, I I'm in the, the camp of. You know, if you want to learn something, just go in and build it, you know, go and break things, make mistakes, ask questions.
you know, it's the, the best way to learn things in my opinion. Well, thank you so much, Jacob, for joining us and giving us an intro to AWS, Amazon Web Services. I feel like we got to even expand and talk a little bit about um, cloud development in general. So really appreciate you being here. And if you are watching this video, I hope you learned something about AWS today. Comment below. Let us know if you have any questions about what you might be learning about cloud at a coding boot camp. Any questions for Jacob? And just let us know what you'd like to see covered on the next course report video on our YouTube channel. We will see you on the next one. Bye.